One other example, let me show you real quick, is just to show you a use of this. Um, so in this example, I have a, a little search filter. So let's say I search by uh, Ken, and it returns Ken. So, but one of the, the things that's fun about the way I implemented this was if we look at, I, this is in the customer app. So these are all, um, most of these are client side functions. But this one function, find customers, um, once again, I implemented this as a server function. And the nice thing about that is, is that it allows it to do the search on the server where it's closest to the data. So rather than trying to bring over, like if you had a large list of customers, rather than bringing in over the whole set of data, I could actually do that search locally on the server. And it's still effectively acting like it's still the same environment. You know, we're still talking about the same objects, but you can just find it running on the server and, and defer it to run there. And, uh, and then once again, the, the code that executes it. What was that Chris? <laughs> So anyway, it just calls the same thing. There's so much stuff in one in JavaScript. <laughs> <laughs> Strange. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm going to find a little demo here. That would be fun. I like the Christmas call. Good. I want to use it, so send me this stuff. I want to play around with it. Yeah. yeah. You know, so I just created a new object. And what I did right here was um, I defined this demo object to be an instance of this demo to object to be an instance of this demo object. So this is the thing that found primes, right? And this one inherits from it. And so these values are inherited from uh, this the original demo that I showed you. And one of the cool things that I can do about this is let's say I want to have a in my instance version, I want to redefine range size to be uh, 30,000. So now I have two objects. Which is this right? Yeah, okay. So this one inherits these two, these two functions from my demo object, but I was able to define override the range size. And so now when I run demo 2, okay. So why do those things show up in red? Is that just indicating that they're inherited? Yeah, exactly. So now I have, I have kind of like two instances. I have this one that overrides the range size to be 30,000, but I still have this original one that has the, the default value of 50,000. So anyway, that's the last demo. Um, I think. So thank you guys for attending this. Appreciate it. Questions? Feedback? That's awesome. That's crazy, man. <laughs> I like it, though. That, that's, that's very interesting to have. I, I, I've, it'd be interesting to forget about yeah. the damn database stuff because <laughs> it slows you down, particularly yeah. when you're early in prototyping and you're really just trying to be creative right. and right. but yet still have something real and tangible, you know, in your right. application. Right. Um, the database stuff, God, gets in the way because it's like, okay, I got to go create a customer and right. oh, now they've made a big change and now I just okay, I just have to drop that and right. so this would just allow you just to okay. You yeah. know, here's this object and start cranking properties into it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's neat. Exactly. It's like gemstone on the client. <laughs> gemstone on the client. <laughs> Seriously, I, I think that there's we started out with right. small talk. It's right. a dynamic language, right? right. Like, right. Uh, but JavaScript. Yeah, and you could actually code along and just start inventing stuff. Right. What at runtime, and it's getting persisted. And you're right. like, oh, I like this. Okay, this is part of the real thing. And yeah. you just keep developing like that, which is exactly like what this is. And when they tried to do gemstone on Java, they had to implement that whole stuff in the VM. Yeah. Right? So you're coding. Uh, it's, uh, I don't know. It's, uh, you said you put it in a JS file or something. It's Rhino, right? The Rhino. Rhino. Right, right. So yeah, I mean, doing it with Java, and that's one of the things is like, like a long time ago, I tried doing. I had some of these ideas for Java, but like, it is so. It just works so much better with the dynamic language. Oh yeah. Than a static language, you know, because you're really doing dynamic things. You're dynamically changing the structure of things on the fly, and you know, like that the demo I did with the the find primes. Like, I mean, I'm dynamically I can dynamically create functions and dynamically change the code. I mean, I, uh, I, mean, I can show you like I could change the code for show prime. But that's weird. That's like a that's like a stored procedure. Yeah. Right. Almost. 
But it's like object-oriented stored procedures. Yeah. Right? It's like having a stored procedure strictly for a... Well, I guess stored procedures are... Well, that's database. That's yeah, database level. Yeah, that's that level. Yeah. I think you're going to win on this one. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That was awesome. Cool. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I appreciate it.